Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Renuka Ares with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lauds union budget for linking education with employability and entrepreneurial capability. Prime Minister urges people to ensure protection of country's forests and safe habitats for animals. External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar to visit Bangladesh tomorrow to finalize agenda of summit meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Bangladeshi counterpart. United Kingdom to receive 10 million AstraZeneca COVID vaccine made by Serum Institute of India. India to commemorate Jabahar Day on the margins of the Maritime India Summit 2021 tomorrow. India and Norway agree to work jointly in the area of marine spatial planning in the oceanic space for the next five years. Railways accords permission to zonal railways to decide on reopening of retiring rooms at stations. Sensex surges 1,148 points to close at 51,000 mark. Six-time world champion pugilist Maricom picked up as chairperson of International Boxing Association's Champions and Veterans Committee. And in cricket, fourth and final test between India and England to begin tomorrow at Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain do gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said the union budget has broadened the government's efforts to link education with employability and entrepreneurial capability. Education ko employability or entrepreneur capabilities usse jodne ka jo prayas kiya gaya hai ye budget unko aur vistar deta hai inhi prayogon ka parinam hai ki aaj scientific publication ke mamle mein bharat top 3 deshon mein aa chuka hai phd karne walon ki sankhya और स्टार्टअप इकोसिस्टम के मामले में भी हम दुनिया में टॉप 3 में पहुंच चुके हैं ग्लोबल इनोवेशन इंडेक्स में भारत दुनिया की टॉप 50 इनोवेटिव कंट्रीज में शामिल हो चुका है और निरंतर सुधार कर रहा है The Prime Minister said the second biggest focus after health in this year's budget is on education skill research and innovation हेल्थ के बाद जो दूसरा सबसे बड़ा फोकस है वो एजुकेशन स्किल रिसर्च और इनोवेशन पर ही है देश के यूनिवर्सिटी कॉलेज आरएनडी इंस्टीट्यूशंस को मैं बेहतर सिनर्जी आज हमारे देश के सबसे बड़ी जरूरत बन गई है इसी को ध्यान में रखते हुए ग्लू ग्रांट का प्रावधान किया गया है जिसके तहत अभी नौ शहरों में इसके लिए जरूरी मैकेनिज्म तैयार किए जा सके Addressing a webinar on implementation of the budget in the education sector, Mr. Modi said to build Atmanirbhar Bharat, the youth of the country needs self-confidence, which is directly connected to their education, knowledge and skill. He said the new national education policy has been developed with this key thought. The Prime Minister said it is an injustice to the nation to keep knowledge and research in limits, with this mindset, the government is opening up several sectors like agriculture, space, atomic energy and DRDO for the youth. He added that India has tested the hydrogen vehicle and now the country has to make itself industry ready to utilize hydrogen as a fuel for transport. He also said future fuel and green energy are very important so as to make the country self-reliant in the energy sector. Thus, the hydrogen mission announced in the budget is a massive project. Green energy हमारी एनर्जी में आत्मनिर्भरता के लिए बहुत जरूरी है इसलिए बजट में घोषित हाइड्रोजन मिशन एक बहुत बड़ा संकल्प है भारत ने हाइड्रोजन व्हीकल का टेस्ट कर लिया है अब हाइड्रोजन को ट्रांसपोर्ट के फ्यूल के रूप में उपयोगिता के और इसके लिए खुद को इंडस्ट्री रेडी बनाने के लिए अब हमें मिलकर आगे बढ़ना होगा टुडे इज द वर्ल्ड वाइल्ड लाइफ डे 
The day is observed to celebrate and raise awareness of the world's wild animals and plants. On the occasion, Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu today urged everyone to put in dedicated efforts to save and preserve wildlife and create greater awareness on the need to maintain a healthy ecological balance on our planet. The Prime Minister has saluted all those working towards wildlife protection on wild, World Wildlife Day. He said, bait lions, tigers and leopards, India is seeking a steady rise in the population of various animals. Mr. Modi added that people should do everything possible to ensure protection of the country's forests and safe habitat for animals. On the occasion, Environment Minister Prakash Avrikar said, the big cat will be a reality soon as the government will bring cheetah back from the extinction. The External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar will reach Dhaka tomorrow on a day-long visit to Bangladesh. He will be finalizing the agenda of the summit meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to be held later this month. More from our Dhaka correspondent. During the visit, the External Affairs Minister will meet Bangladesh Foreign Minister Dr. A. K. Abdul Momin. He will also call on Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in Dhaka. According to a press release issued by the Ministry of External Affairs, the visit of Dr. Jay Shankar follows on the summit-level virtual meeting between the Prime Ministers of India and Bangladesh in December last year. The External Affairs Minister will take stock of the progress in bilateral relations between the two countries. The visit of the External Affairs Minister comes ahead of the visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Bangladesh to take part in the centenary celebration of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib and 50 years of the liberation of Bangladesh later this month. Both the countries are likely to sign several MOUs and agreements during the visit of Prime Minister Modi to Bangladesh. Rajesh Jha for AIR News, Dhaka. India will commemorate Chabahar Day tomorrow on the margins of the Maritime India Summit 2021. The event will be held virtually. Ministers from Afghanistan, Armenia, Iran, Kazakhstan, Russia and Uzbekistan will participate in the event. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar will address the ministerial level opening session. Minister for Ports, Shipping and Waterways, Mansukh Mandavia, will deliver the keynote address. The ministerial level opening session will be followed by two webinar sessions on the development of port infrastructure, unleashing opportunities and boosting business through trade promotion and regional connectivity. Railways have accorded permission to zonal railways to decide on reopening of retiring rooms at stations, keeping in view local condition, including COVID-related protocols issued by the government. The Railway Board has already permitted for restarting operation of retiring rooms, rail yatri nevas and hotels in October last year, which are managed by the IRCTC. The Railway Ministry said, at present, various special express and passenger train services have been introduced in phased manner as per the requirement. Considering the convenience of passengers, Railways has decided to allow operation of retiring room at stations subject to fulfillment of protocols issued by the government. These conveniences were discontinued post-announcement of lockdown to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Railways Minister Piyush Goyal today flagged off Kodwar Delhi Junction Kodwar Sitbali Jan Shatabdi special train through video conferencing. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Goyal expressed his gratitude to the hard-working railway employees who served the country during pandemic by supplying medicines, coal and other necessary essential items. He informed that Kodwar Delhi route electrification is almost complete and only 15 km stretch is pending, which is expected to be completed by this month. The train will connect Kodwar with national capital and bring socio-economic development in the region. Pilgrims visiting Siddhabali Temple will be benefited with improved connectivity. In Jharkhand, Finance Minister Dr. Rameshwar Rao today presented the budget for the year 2021-22 in the State Assembly at Ranchi. Dr. Rao presented the state budget with a total outlay of 91,277 crore rupees with an increase of over 7,100 crore rupees in comparison to last year's budget. A provision of 1,200 crore rupees has been made in the budget for waiving off farmers' loans. The breakup of the budget includes a revenue expenditure of over 75,755 crore rupees and capital expenditure of 15,521.99 crore rupees. The Election Commission today organized a briefing for observers to be deployed for the forthcoming assembly polls in Assam, Kerala, Puducherry, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal. 
More than 1,650 observers participated in the meeting physically and virtually from more than 120 remote locations. Officers from IAS, IPS, IRS and other central services have been included to be deployed as general police and expenditure observers. In Assam, Chief Electoral Officer Nitin Kare asserted that the misuse of money, muscle and liquor will be under strict vigil in the run-up to and during the elections in the state. He said that the expenditure limit of each candidate has been fixed at 30.8 lakh rupees. More from our Guwahati correspondent. To curb the unethical influence of money power in the Assam Assembly polls, expenditure observers, flying squad and static surveillance team have been engaged in the state. The chief electoral officer Nitin Khare said that banks would also be asked to keep an eye on all suspicious withdrawal of cash. The enforcement directorate would also remain alert during the polls. Police and excise department have started drives against the misuse of liquor and so far recovered large number of illegal liquor. To curb the misuse of muscle power, Assam police has been executing all non bailable warrants issued in the state. Manas Patim Sarma, AR News, Guwahati. In West Bengal, political parties are holding rounds of discussion to finalize their candidate lists in view of the upcoming assembly elections. Leaders of BJP's state unit will leave for Delhi this evening to finalize the candidate list for the first two phases of assembly elections. After the meeting of the election committee of the party today, President of BJP State Unit, Dilip Ghosh said that after the approval of the party's central leadership, the candidates will be finalized. Trinamul Congress will also hold a meeting of party leaders tomorrow regarding finalizing the candidates. In the Union Territory of Puducherry, polling for 30 assembly seats will be held on April the 6th. Following the announcement of the election, the political parties are busily engaged with discussions and finalizing the alliance at the earliest. Income tax officials today raided 30-plus locations in Mumbai and Pune. Raids are being carried out at the properties of some film personalities. More from our Mumbai correspondent. Income tax officials today confirm that the raids are being conducted at 30 plus locations in Mumbai and Pune. Officials have also said that department has some information regarding tax evasion and investigation is going on. Department officials have said that details will be shared after the completion of the raids. Department has also clarified that it never shares the name of the person or the organization on which raids are being conducted. Jeevan Bhausar, AIR News, Mumbai. In the run-up to the International Women's Day celebrated on the 8th of March, All India Radio News is honouring women achievers from diverse fields by bringing their stories. Manja Majogati was conferred with Padma Shri this year. She was the first trans woman chairperson of the Karnataka Janapada Academy. Manjamma Jogati has been working for years to keep Jogati in Ritya, Janpada songs and other art forms aloft. Jogati and Ritya Janpada songs are practiced in rural Karnataka, Maharashtra and other parts of Andhra Pradesh. She was awarded the Karnataka Janpada Academy Award in 2006. In 2010, the government of Karnataka honored her with the annual Kannada Rajya Utsava Award. Talking to All India Radio News, she sang the song which she used to sing while seeking arms. Namaskar. Namaskar. This is the song that I used to sing with a musical instrument in my hands while seeking arms. She appealed to her community to learn and promote the art and culture of the land. My appeal to the transgenders, the third gender community, learn an art form, promote the art and culture of the land. I have dedicated myself to the Jogati folk art. Choose any of the art forms and dedicate your life to it. With Sudhindra from Bangalore, Diksha Saxena, AIR News, Delhi. India and Norway have agreed to jointly work in the area of marine spatial planning in the oceanic space for the next five years. The two countries have decided to extend support for sustainable ocean resources utilization to advance economic and social development in coastal areas. The initiative, known as Marine Spatial Planning, will be implemented by the Ministry of Earth Sciences through National Centre for Coastal Research for India. 
In this regard, the first project steering committee meeting was successfully conducted virtually recently, after which the two countries have charted out a plan to ensure that human activities at sea take place in an efficient, safe and sustainable manner in areas such as energy, transportation, fisheries, aquaculture and tourism. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lords union budget for linking education with employability and entrepreneurial cap capability. Prime Minister urges people to ensure protection of country's forests and safe habitat for animals. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar to visit Bangladesh tomorrow to finalize agenda of summit meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Bangladeshi counterpart. United Kingdom to receive 10 million AstraZeneca COVID vaccine made by Serum Institute of India. India to commemorate Chabahar Day on the margins of Maritime India Summit 2021 tomorrow. India and Norway agree to work jointly in the area of marine spatial planning in the oceanic space for the next five years. Railways accord permission to zonal railways to decide on reopening of retiring rooms at stations. Sensex surges 1,148 points to close up at 51,000 mark. Six-time world champion pugilist Mary Kong picked up as chairperson of International Boxing Association's Champions and Veterans Committee. And in cricket, fourth and final test between India and England to begin tomorrow at Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the evening news. The COVID-19 recovery rate in the country has touched 97.06%. The health ministry said over 13,000 people were discharged in the last 24 hours. Till now, over 1 crore 8 lakh 12,000 people have recovered from COVID-19 infection. In the last 24 hours, around 15,000 new cases were reported. With this, the total number of cases has reached over 1 crore 11 lakh. The ministry said 98 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours. So far, over 1 crore 56 lakh beneficiaries have been vaccinated. Today, 2,765 new COVID cases were reported in Kerala. 4,031 people recovered from the disease. During the last 24 hours, 59,646 COVID tests were performed. At present, the disease cons confirmation rate in the state is 4.64%. Currently, about 45,995 COVID patients are undergoing treatment in the state. The death toll rose to 4,241, with 15 more deaths confirmed to be due to COVID. In Nagaland, five new positive cases of COVID-19 have been reported from Kohima today, taking the tally to 12,205. With this, the number of active cases has been added to 12, while the total recovered cases remained at 11,949. In Manipur, one person was confirmed as a new COVID-19 positive case in the past 24 hours, while two people were recovered from COVID-19. The total number of positive cases reached 29,283 and the total recovered cases stand at 28,878. The number of active cases is 32 as on date. The centre has decided to allow all private hospitals to function as COVID vaccination centres. The government said... The decision was taken to utilize 100% capacities of all private hospitals. Earlier private hospitals impaneled with Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, Central Government Health Scheme and similar state health insurance schemes were allowed to function as COVID vaccination centers. Speaking to AIR News, a senior citizen, Madhu Gopal, who got vaccinated at Max Hospital, said she is satisfied with the vaccination process. I registered myself online. Everything was in order and there was a waiting room and one room for vaccination and another room for observation. I really liked the way they were giving the service to the people. My heart felt respect for them. I was very happy with the process of vaccination. 
ಬೃಹತ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಮಹಾನಗರ ಪಾಲಿಕೆ ಕಮಿಷನರ್ ಎನ್ ಮಂಜುನಾಥ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಹಸ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ನಾಗ್ ಎನ್ಕೌಂಟರ್ ಬೈ ದ ಪೋರ್ಟಲ್ ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಸಿಟಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನೇಷನ್ ಹಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ರೆಕ್ಟಿಫೈಡ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಮೀಡಿಯಾ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಟುಡೇ ಹಿ ಸೆಡ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ದ ಸ್ನಾಗ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಆನ್ ಡೇ ಒನ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಬಯೋಟೆಕ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅನೌನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಕೋವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಡೆಮಾನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಇಂಟರಿಯಂ ಕ್ಲಿನಿಕಲ್ ಎಫಿಕಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಏಟಿ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಟ್ರಯಲ್ ದ ಟ್ರಯಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಏಟ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ಸೈಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಟರಿಯಂ ಅನಾಲಿಸಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಚ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ವರ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಸೀಬಲ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕೋವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ರಿಸಲ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಎಫಿಕಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಏಟಿ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಡಿರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಡಾ ಬಲರಾಮ್ ಭಾರ್ಗವ್ ಸೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಜರ್ನಿ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಇಂಡಿಜಿನಸ್ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಇನ್ ಲೆಸ್ ದನ್ ಏಟ್ ಮಂತ್ಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಶೋ ಕೇಸಸ್ ದ ಇಮೆನ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಆಫ್ ಆತ್ಮ ನಿರ್ಭರ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಯುಕೆ ಟು ರಿಸೀವ್ ಟೆನ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಆಸ್ಟ್ರಾಜೆನಕ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಡೋಸಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ದೀಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಡೋಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಸೀರಂ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಎಸ್ಐಐ ದ ಯುಕೆ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಬ್ರಿಟನ್ ಹಾಸ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ಡ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಡೋಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಸ್ಟ್ರಾಜೆನಕ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಚ್ ಟೆನ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಡೋಸಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಸೀರಂ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅ ಸ್ಲೂ ಆಫ್ ಲೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಮಿಡಲ್ ಇನ್ಕಮ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ರೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬಾಂಗ್ಲಾದೇಶ್ ಟು ಬ್ರೆಜಿಲ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆನ್ ಎಸ್ಐಐಸ್ ಆಸ್ಟ್ರಾಜೆನಕ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಬ್ರಾಂಡೆಡ್ ಕೋವಿಶೀಲ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಡಿಮಾಂಡ್ ಹಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಗ್ರೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವೆಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ under the vaccine maitri initiative of the government of india five nations today received the made in india covid-19 vaccines planes carrying the consignments of vaccine doses landed in gotamala kenya rwanda democratic republic of congo and senegal benchmark domestic stocks today climbed more than 2% in sync with gains in the global equity markets the bse sensex regained 51000 uh, mark while the nse nifty reclaimed the 15000 level the rupee also strengthened 65 paise against the us currency a report from the business world the sensex closed 1148 points up at 51445 and the nse nifty surged 327 points to finish at 15246 the broader market at bse also gained under performing the sensex in the global equity market stocks climbed shrugging off concern about the bubble in stocks amid us stimulus supported economic recovery oil prices rose amid hope of demand recovery in intraday trade brent crude prices were trading around 63 dollars and 70 cents per barrel back home gold prices fell around 500 rupees per 10 grams at multi commodity exchange and at the forex market the rupee appreciated 65 paisa against the us dollar to settle at 72 rupees and 72 paisa anubha rohatki for air news and now news from the world of sports in cricket the fourth and final test between india and england will begin from tomorrow at the narendra modi stadium in ahmedabad the match is scheduled to begin at 9:30 am the third test last week ended within two days with the host looking to secure a place in the world test championship final the first test held at the narendra modi stadium the world's biggest cricket venue turned out to be one of the shortest in history as england was thrashed inside two days The result which left India 2-1 up in the four test series and ruled England out of the World Championship final prompted accusations that the over spin friendly pitch was not up to standard without Kohli's India need a win or a draw to book a clash with New Zealand in the inaugural World Test Championship final and England win would put Australia into the decider at Lords in June six time world champion Fergus Merrickcom has been appointed as chairperson of the International Boxing Association's AIBA Champions and Veterans Committee AIBA president Umar Kremli has said this in a letter to the 2012 Olympic bronze medalist Merrickcom was elected by the board of directors of AIBA the committee formed in December last year consists of most respected worldwide boxing veterans and champions who have achieved significant results and who are ready to share their experience Mary Com thanked AIBA president and said she will give her best at the position in badminton
Saina Nehwal faces Thailand's Vitya Bom Chai Wan. In hockey, the Indian women will take on Germany in their fourth match at Dusseldorf, Germany tomorrow. India lost to Germany 2-0 in the third game. The hosts are heading 3-0 in the four-match series. On Sunday, Indian men's hockey team, led by SR Srijesh, put up a scintillating show as they outclass host Germany 6-1 in the first of their four-match Europe tour. Now, India will travel to Antwerp, Belgium, where they will take on Great Britain on Saturday and Monday before wrapping up the 17-day tour. Anita Anand, Sports Desk. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National capital Delhi is likely to have mist. Temperature will hover between 14 and 32 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a mainly clear sky. Minimum temperature will be 26 degrees. Maximum is expected to be around 29. Chennai is expected to have partly cloudy sky. Temperature will vary between 22 and 34 degrees Celsius. Kolkata may witness fog or mist in the morning and partly cloudy sky later. The city will observe minimum temperature of 21 degrees and a maximum of around 36. Srinagar will have a partly cloudy sky in the morning hours, becoming generally cloudy towards evening or night with possibility of rain or thunder showers accompanied with squall. Temperature will hover between 3 and 16 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have a mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. The minimum temperature will be 12 degrees, while the maximum will be around 28. Leh is expected to have a mainly clear sky. Minimum temperature will be around minus 7 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 9 degrees. Gilgit will have a mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between 5 and 23 degrees Celsius. In Muzaffarabad, the sky will be partly cloudy, becoming generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening or night. Temperature will vary between 9 and 24 degrees Celsius. Indian scientists have designed and developed a low-cost optical spectrograph. The spectrograph can locate sources of faint light from distant classes and galaxies. It is one of the largest astronomical spectrographs in the country and has been successfully commissioned on the 3.6-meter Devsthal Optical Telescope near Nainital, Uttarakhand. Dr. Amitosh Umar, scientist at the Research Institute Aries, who led the project team, spoke to All India Radio on this development. Secretary, Department of Investment and Public Asset Management, Deepam, Tuhin Kanta Pandey today said that the offer for sale of government shares in public sector undertaking, Aircon International Limited, has got a great response on day one. In a tweet, the Secretary said the issue subscribed 3.3 times of base size at a clearing price above the floor price by non-retail investors. He said the government has decided to exercise the green shoe option. The retail investors will get chance to bid tomorrow. At least nine people were killed in three cities and townships of Myanmar and more than 30 were wounded in firing by the security forces against protesters on Wednesday. The death toll in the ongoing protest in Myanmar now stands at 31. The security forces resorted to live fire in several cities as the military government stepped up use of force to control the ongoing protest in the country. Police also used stun grenades and tear gas against protesters in towns like Mingyan, where one person was killed in firing. In the central town of Myanmar, five people were killed. In the second largest city of the country, Mandalay, two people were killed and one person was killed in police firing in Yangon. There were reports in local media that six protesters were killed in North Okalapa Township near Yangon in firing by security forces. Now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lords union budget for linking education with employability and entrepreneurial capability. Prime Minister urges people to ensure protection of country's forests and safe habitats for animals. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar to visit Bangladesh tomorrow to finalize the agenda of summit with meeting between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Bangladeshi counterpart. United Kingdom to receive 10 million AstraZeneca COVID vaccine made by Serum Institute of India. India to commemorate Jawahar Day on the margins of the Maritime India Summit 2021 tomorrow. India and Norway agree to work jointly in the area of marine spatial planning in the oceanic space for the next five years. Railways accords permission to zonal railways to decide on reopening of retiring rooms at stations. Sensex surges 1,148 points to close at 51,000 mark. 
six time world champion pugilist Mary Com picked up as chairperson of International Boxing Association's Champions and Veterans Committee. And in cricket, fourth and final test between India and England to begin tomorrow at Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com and newsonair app. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.